Hello everybody, welcome back. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe, click the bell notification icon if you like the content and check out the top right eye for more nice links. Today is a little bit of a fixer upper video. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and check out how we're doing the attack animation. We're gonna add a damage animation to the enemy. We're also gonna fiddle around a little bit in the game state. So it's gonna be a pretty interesting video. Let's get started pretty quickly here. Let's see how we're doing the attack right now and what we need. So you guys have perspective on what we're doing here we are here we are in game state uh, going down to where we're updating combat here is where all the magic happens right so it should be right here we have two functions we have update combat and enemies and that in turn updates the combat for each of the enemies the problem here is when we run this you'll see that our player kind of swirls this around and the enemies just kind of die nothing really happens here nothing it's not really game like this this spinning isn't really nice so what we want is we want kind of a slash or a forward thrust something that indicates that we have attacked a little better and we're gonna set this up for even nicer animations later on first step is gonna be to take this mouse position left check and put it outside of our entire thing so we want to put it up here and we want to make sure that if we click the mouse that's when that check happens so you can just control x the whole thing away here and then remove that and sign and everything else here should be the same place that into this new if statement add another one of these if you need and there you go voila that you have a first step here then we're gonna need a few more things we have to go to our weapon class weapon.cpp and h i'm just gonna open those up here and you'll see we have a few things what i need is i need an init attack then what i'm gonna need is i'm gonna need a variable in my player h here which is called init attack so we have attacking this is kind of the ongoing attack i need a this init attack equals false here so this is going to be more of the initial attack so it will tell us that okay has a player initiated the attack and we can use that and then we can use attacking as a kind of is it is he still attacking they will help us when we try to check or try to animate the attack so let's create an accessor for this let's do a const boolean reference get in it attack and this isn't going to do anything more than just get it back like we always do return this in it attack like that we need a modifier for this as well i can see there are no modifier section here modifier now let's do a void set in it attack const bool in it attack as we define this, we're just gonna say this init attack equals init attack. Very simple. Next step is to go back to your sword. So I wanna create an animation for this sword and that's why we need all this stuff. So I made a little mistake here. We don't wanna do this. We wanna create this if statement outside. That's the whole point. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna use our new players init attack. So set init attack to true out here. And that will make sure that we have initialized the attack anytime we press press the left button and that will start this whole whole for loop here update the combat if that is set so if get in it attack if that is true then we'll update the combat for all the enemies this will remove a lot of our problem but what we have to do is then we have to outside here always set this player in it attack to false after each loop whenever this loop is done we need to set it to false so we can do that again and this is a little more of an optimization as well because we don't we won't update the combat with this specific enemy or any enemy until we have actually initiated an attack against any enemy so let's test this if our attack is still working and it seems to still be working now i want to create sort of a little animation that doesn't just rotate everything it's gonna poke the enemy whenever we hit the enemy it's gonna poke the enemy to do that we have our weapon sprite here but we're gonna set the position to something all right and that position is gonna be dependent on center.x and center.y so from the center we're gonna move out towards the mouse position and attack it's gonna be like a poking animation for this we're gonna need dx and dy but we're gonna need it normalized so we need to normalize the vector of course to normalize the vector you guys know how to do that by now right we're gonna actually just do this we're gonna do squirt squirt std square root this is to get the length of the vector let's do pow dx and then to the power of two plus pow dy to the power of two and we have the length of the entire vector we'll call this float length here now of course we want a vector so sf 
vector 2f. We'll call this norm vec. It will be a normalized vector. And then we're going to do this. We're going to say norm vec. We're going to give it dx dy divided by length and then divided by length. So we're not going to have to do that at all. This will just provide us with a normalized vector perfectly done just like we want it. And we can multiply this norm vec plus let's add a few plus signs here norm vec dot x plus norm vec dot y and then with a multiplier of our choice so i'm just going to say 5 dot f multiplied by 5 dot f and since this is set position it's just going to pop it's just going to pop towards that direction let's try this so once we come close to an enemy you'll see you'll see a little poking animation that's not too big then we can add a little more to this let's do 10 would give us a lot more yeah 10 is a lot more visible one thing we don't have now is our enemies don't blink. They don't do anything when they're attacked. To fix that, we are going to add some kind of a damage timer to our enemy class. And this damage timer will tick down as long as the enemy has been hit once and not died. It will tick down and this timer will help us put a color to the enemy that indicates that it's invincible right now. You can't damage it for a certain amount of time. So open up your enemy CPP and enemy H. We have a lot of files open here. I apologize for that. In this file, we're going to add a simple timer here. SF lock damage timer and then SF int 32 damage timer max and i see that we have a private here for our enemy class we want to do protected because we want anything that inherits this to access it directly the next step will be going to rat and this is where the magic's going to happen to go into rat and we're going to add a if this damage timer dot get elapsed time as milliseconds this is very important milliseconds is less than or equal to this get damage timer max like that else this sprite set color sf color white and in here while it is it's counting down we're gonna set it to red this will allow us to see our enemy being damaged now we need a way to set this timer to restart this timer go to your enemy h we have our values here but we need to initialize them so down here we're going to say this damage timer max is going to be a thousand a thousand milliseconds that is one second but to enable this we need a function to reset it and to reset it we are going to do a modifiers here um, and we're going to say void reset damage timer simple Defining this is also very easy. We're just going to say this damage timer dot restart and don't do restart as milliseconds or anything. It will still just restart normally dot milliseconds is to get the elapsed time in milliseconds. So you don't have to do that when you restart it. Now we can go to our update enemy and we'll see that our damage here where whenever we lose HP, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say enemy reset damage timer and that will color the enemy red as we hit it. So you'll see it died directly. We need to lower the damage. Set the enemy lose HP to 1. And let's go. It will show wrong numbers now. Don't worry. But you'll see that the enemy is red while, while it's in that damage timer. So it will be there for 1 second. I can obviously hit it still. But to counteract that, we're going to use that timer. To use that timer, I'm going to create another accessor here. Const bool get damage timer done const. This function is purely to see if this damage timer is done or not. So we can choose if we want the enemy to take damage or not. Dot get elapsed time as milliseconds is greater or equal to this damage timer max. So there we go. Good. Now we can use this again in our game state. Go back to your game state. At any time this happens, if this attack timer all that then here we'll check the enemy timer as well enemy get damage timer done run this and you see we'll, we'll keep continuously attacking the enemy but it will only take damage once a second as soon as that red thing is gone we're gonna create an, a little animation which flashes the enemy as as long as it's taking damage so it'll be a little cooler so just do one last thing just change this to dmg back so that your enemies will take the correct amount of damage and we're pretty much good to go this setup is working pretty fine we have some more things we can do to make a nicer animation but we'll get to that as we go along it's quite complicated to make attacking because it should be fun it should be nice it should be responsive and it should show you what's going on what you want to do actually is to have a nice animation of the weapon moving back and forth maybe as a thrust not just putting the position so we'll try to set that up somehow but for now i think we're done thank you so much for watching this video thanks for sticking with me throughout this series thanks for all your support take care drop a like subscribe and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye